Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning and welcome to our service of morning prayer from St. Patrick's Cathedral Trim. Wherever you may be watching, we welcome you to join with us in this act of worship. This is the third Sunday of Easter, and we begin our worship as we sing hymn 259, Christ Triumphant Ever Reigning. Christ died for our sins once for all, and now he lives to God. Let us renew our resolve to have done with all that is evil and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth will proclaim your praise. 
O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. And we praise the Lord as we sing the Easter anthems on page 104 of the prayer book. Listen to our first scripture reading. The first reading, Acts chapter 3, verses 12 to 19. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you. You killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and to turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The psalm for today is number four. Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You set me at liberty 
when I was in trouble. How long will you nobles dishonor my glory? How long will you love vain things and seek after falsehood? But know that the Lord has shown me his marvelous kindness. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices of the righteous and put your trust in the Lord. There are many that say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their corn and their wine and oil increase. In peace, I will lie down and sleep, for it is you, Lord, only who can make me dwell in safety. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. We listen to our second scripture reading. The second reading is from Luke chapter 24, verses 36 to 48. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see me. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the word of the Lord. May my words and our thoughts be in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. When I visited the Holy Land some years ago, one of the things which made a lasting impression on me was the realization that both the Hebrew and Arabic words of greeting, shalom and salam, mean exactly the same thing. Peace be with you. Both words encapsulate a sense of well-being, of wholeness, health, and completion or fulfillment. Thus, to wish somebody shalom or salam is more than just to say hello or good day. It expresses a wish for, of all that is good for the person you address. Both Luke and John describe the risen Jesus appearing to the disciples with the greeting, Shalom, peace be with you. Of course, the disciples were anything but peaceful at that moment of our Lord's appearance. They were startled and terrified because they thought they were seeing a ghost and who could blame them in the circumstances. If we turn back a few pages in the Gospel of Luke to the account of Palm Sunday, we realize that peace is very much our Lord's desire for people, which he expressed for the people of Jerusalem when he wept over the city, saying, if only you had recognized this day the things that make for peace. They had greeted him as a conquering hero on Palm Sunday, but they failed to receive his message, which could have brought them peace with God and neighbor. 
in John's Gospel when Jesus addressed his disciples in the upper room before his arrest, he said to them, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. He was describing the sense of inner peace and fulfillment which they would receive through the Holy Spirit after he departed from them to go to be with the Father. Peace with God peace between the followers of Christ and bringing peace to the world is at the heart of the Christian gospel. We hear it at the very beginning of Luke's gospel when John the Baptist was born and his father spoke about God's dawn breaking to give light to those who sit in darkness and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Then when angels announced the birth of a savior, they sang glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the risen Jesus reassured his disciples that it really was him, bodily present with them, he opened their minds and using scripture explained God's plan of salvation to them. He explained that his suffering and death, which had seemed to them as a disaster, was God's intended plan for humanity. Through the saving death of Christ, people would be able to receive forgiveness of sins and peace with God. The followers of Jesus who witnessed his death and resurrection were to proclaim this message of repentance and forgiveness to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, the very place where he had been crucified just a few days before. Note that phrase, to the nations. Here we see another kind of peace at work because the good news of God's love was to be shared with people of every race and every nation. The age-old barrier between Jew and Gentile did not apply in this new age inaugurated after the resurrection of Christ. The Easter message is one of hope and peace, peace with God, peace between peoples, and those who seek and receive God's forgiveness, peace at the last. One of the notable things about the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus recorded in the Gospels is that his closest friends didn't recognize him at first. Mary Magdalene thought he was the gardener until he addressed her by name. The two friends who walked with him along the road to Emmaus only recognized him when he broke bread with them. The disciples in the upper room thought he was a ghost at, ghost at first until they saw him eat. Nor did they recognize him on the lake shore of Galilee until he told them to cast their net on the other side of the boat and they landed a huge catch. It was Jesus who appeared to them, bodily present, but somehow different. Yet none of the gospels explain exactly how so. He came to show himself to the disciples before returning to his Father in heaven. So the risen Jesus in the gospels gives us a glimpse of the life after death which he promised to his followers, saying, where I am, there you may be also. The Easter message brings us peace with God, peace with one another, and peace at the last in life eternal. Amen. We sing hymn number 130 from Thanks and Praise, Sing 
God's Easter people sing. Let us affirm our faith, saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Collect for the Third Sunday of Easter. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life, and serve you continually in righteousness and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God, we offer you our praise and thanks for the good news of Easter in the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, from the dead, for the hope of life eternal, for the forgiveness of sins, and for the promise of new life in Christ. Grant that your church may faithfully proclaim this good news to the world. Lord, hear us. Your Son, Jesus, sent his disciples to be his witnesses to the world. We pray for all who are called to ministry in your church, for bishops, priests, deacons, readers, and all who teach the Christian faith. We pray for this diocese, for Pat, our bishop, 
and for our local community of faith. We pray for all who are preparing to be baptized or confirmed that they may daily increase in faith. Lord, hear us. We pray for all who long for new beginnings, those who are unemployed or seeking a new direction in their work, those in broken or difficult relationships, those who are homeless or trapped in poverty, those who have lost meaning and direction in life. Help them to find new hope and purpose and give us a willingness to reach out in care and love to others. Lord, hear us. The risen Christ brought peace to his disciples. We pray for peace in the world, especially in those places of war and conflict, remembering the people of Yemen and Tigray province in Ethiopia. We pray for an end to the recent disturbances in Northern Ireland and for an easing of tension on the borders of Ukraine. Give strength and wisdom to all peacemakers. Lord, hear us. We pray for all who are sick and those who struggle with pain and illness. We pray for all who are undergoing treatment, awaiting results of tests, or facing surgery. Grant them your strength, healing, and peace. Lord, hear us. We pray for all who mourn, remembering especially Nara Spiti and his family on the loss of his brother, Roy. Comfort them in their time of grief. We give thanks for the promise of eternal life as we remember all whom we have known and loved and have passed into your nearer presence. Bring us with them to the everlasting joy and peace of your kingdom. Lord, hear us. We pray in the second collect of morning prayer. O Lord, our heavenly Father, almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger, and in all things guide us to know and do your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing hymn number 84, Alleluia, Raise the Anthem.
The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, raise you up to walk with him in the newness of his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>